Hey there. Today I'm going to show you CodeShip Pro. CodeShip Pro is CodeShip's customizable, flexible CI CD platform that uses Docker containers to let you build your own CI CD environment. Now, when we talk about CodeShip Pro, there are four key points I want you to keep in mind. So, we're going to cover those and then we'll jump into a quick, high level example of how the service works. So the first thing to know is that CodeShip Pro is a fully customizable, flexible CI CD platform. That means whether you're trying to do something as simple as take a Rails app and FTP it to a server, all the way up to complex orchestration using Chef or Kubernetes or Puppet or Ansible, CodeShip Pro will help you accomplish that entire spectrum of use cases. Now the next thing to know is that CodeShip Pro uses Docker as a domain language to define your application and your environments. And what that means is rather than inventing a CodeShip proprietary series of languages and syntax to help you build out your CI CD environment and workflow, we decided to use Docker since it's already out there, since a lot of teams have Docker apps and need Docker support, and since it's so well documented and supported around the web. Now one of the side effects of using Docker as a domain language is that if you can run it on Docker, you can run it on CodeShip Pro. And what that also means is anything you're trying to figure out how to do, rather than worrying about how does CodeShip configure this specific tool or how does CodeShip solve for this specific problem, you can focus on how can I build a container to solve this problem or how can I build a container to support this tool. So if you can run it on Docker, you can run it on CodeShip Pro, and if you're trying to run it on CodeShip Pro, all you need to do is figure out how to solve for it in a Docker container. And then lastly, CodeShip Pro is easy to learn, easy to set up, but powerful to customize and optimize. And what I mean by that is since we reuse Docker, it's super easy to find the information you need to find the support you need, to find use cases that have already been solved for. Very quick to get up and going. But if you want to start doing things like breaking your monolith apart into microservices, or including complex orchestration into your deployment process, CodeShip Pro gives you all the flexibility to start adding that level of depth and complexity as your project grows or as you scale up use of the platform. And now I want to jump into a quick, high-level look at how CodeShip Pro works. So to start with, what you're going to do is connect your repo to CodeShip, and that's going to be GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. And from there, there are two YAML files that you'll create and place in the repo. And every time you commit code or merge a pull request, we're going to run a build from that repo on our dedicated single-use EC2 instances. And we're going to use these two YAML files to parse and run your CI CD pipeline. Now, the first file, what we see here, CodeShip Services YAML, you might be thinking it looks a lot like a Docker Compose file. And that's because it essentially is. So we use the same syntax, language, and options as a Compose file. So if you're familiar with Compose, you already know how to build this file. And if you're not, Compose is super well supported. What you're going to do with it may be pretty similar to what you do with Compose, but there's also going to be changes for the purposes of CI CD, which we'll take a look at. And in this case, what we can see is I'm defining a container called app. I'm telling it to build a Docker file, and I'm linking Redis and Postgres as required services. And then I define Redis and Postgres down here. Now, by default, since these are not building Docker files, they're just going to download images from the Docker Hub. But you can download images from or push images up to any image registry you want. Docker Hub, Quay, Amazon ECR, or even your own private self-hosted registry. Now, there are a couple things here that are specific to CodeShip. And the first one is cached true. So what cached true means, and you can set this for as many services as you'd like, we will save this image at the end of the build, 
And on future builds, we will go through your Docker file layer by layer, and any layers that haven't changed, we will download them from the cache so that we can reuse them rather than having to rebuild those layers over and over. What we also have is encrypted ENV file. And since your environment variables for CICD may need to be access keys or production related secrets, we wanted to give you a way to keep those fully secure, which we'll take a look at in a moment. So you can keep your environment variables secure and you can also encrypt your registry credentials for authenticating with your private image registries. And essentially that's what CodeShip Services YAML is doing. It's telling CodeShip how to build and orchestrate and connect all of our containers for the purposes of CI/CD. So then if we take a look at CodeShip Steps YAML, CodeShip Steps YAML is a list of everything that happens in my CI/CD process. So every test, artifact, deployment, image push is all just a command here in my steps file. And out of the gate, I can see a few pieces of syntax. First, I can run individual commands like we see here one after another, or I can use this type parallel directive like we see here to group commands together to spin up separate containers on the host to run these at the same time. Now we can also use this tag feature on any command or any group of commands. So in this case tag master, and down here I've got a similar group of commands that says tag staging, and tag says only run these commands or only run this command on this branch. So if I merge code into staging, I'm going to run this parallel group. Up here, if I merge code into master, I will be running this group. And then here, where I've got steps that have no tag, they are going to run on every build, regardless of branch. And the tag will also accept regex, so you can do nice branch matching strategies as well. Now if we take a look at how a single command works, you'll see that there's two pieces to a command, the service and the command itself. So service app and then a command, or down here, service AWS deployment, and then what looks to be AWS API calls. And so when we say service and provide the command, we're actually directly referencing a service in our services file. And that's because on CodeShip Pro, all of your commands run natively in your containers. So one way to think of it is, you're telling CodeShip what containers you need, and then you're telling CodeShip what you want to do with them. So in the case of this AWS command, if my goal was to run AWS deployments, I would need to code tell CodeShip what the command is, like we see here, and what container to use, like we see here. When I look at my services file, you can see that I am, in fact, building an AWS deployment container, which builds a separate Docker file. And when I take a look at that Docker file, I am fetching the AWS CLI. So as one quick high level example, because I need to run AWS commands, I've built a container with the AWS CLI. And this is true for any technology any service, any use case you're trying to solve for. As long as you can give CodeShip a container that accepts your commands, then you can run those commands on CodeShip Pro. And now the last key piece of the service I want to take a look at is here on my command line, and it's called JET. So JET is a local CLI tool we've built. Everyone on your team can install it locally, and JET does a few different things to help out your build process. JET is how I encrypt my environment variables and registry credentials using this JET encrypt command. And then JET's going to help me debug and troubleshoot using JET steps. So before I run this, I want to take a look at the web UI. And so every time I run a build on CodeShip, I will see the build show up here and I can jump into it to look at my build logs. But before I even do that, before I commit my code, to have CodeShip spin up the build on the build machine and then report back to me, I can actually run JET steps here on my local machine and it will run my CI CD process, skipping deployments by default. And what this will let me do is troubleshoot and debug faster because it will report back to me with any errors or any problems my build process has. And you can see here it's starting to build my Ruby container 
And once this runs, it would come back and tell me, are my YAML files correct? Is my configuration correct? Do I have any typos? And I don't have to commit my code over and over to get it working. So JET is a great way to speed up your local development process. And at a high level, that's pretty much how CodeShip Pro works. You can sign up for free today at codeship.com.